Hi, and welcome back. So I often get asked if the supplements I take really are working, and more importantly, are they actually worth the money that they cost? So today I'm going to talk about the five things you must know before you start to take any longevity related supplements. And although many supplements do have a valuable role in people's health, they are often misunderstood and frequently oversold. That said, many people are unaware of the risks, the limitations and the marketing tricks that lie behind some of the labels. And that goes for the big companies and the boutique brands that are just starting out. Now, if you follow my channel regularly, you'll know that I've got five pillars of longevity. The first of which is nutrition. So if you can get all the nutrients you need from your dad, this is almost always going to be the best option. The UK's Food Standards Agency defines a food supplement as a product intended to correct nutritional deficiencies, maintain an adequate intake of certain nutrients, or support specific physiological functions. Now, I'm sure similar definitions are used in many countries all over the world. In other words, supplements are there to support your diet and are not produced to replace real food. Whole foods offer much more than just isolated nutrients. For example, oily fish like salmon provides not just omega-3, but also protein, vitamin D, selenium, and other beneficial compounds. These interact in ways that are not fully understood yet by the medical community. And the combined effect is difficult, if not impossible, to fully replicate in supplement form. That said, researchers have tried to isolate the active ingredients found in fruit and vegetables to recreate their benefits in a pill or capsule. But this has been done so far with limited success. The advantages seem to come from the complete food and not just from one specific compound. Although there are certainly circumstances where supplements are indeed very necessary. For example, folic acid is recommended before and during pregnancy to reduce the risk of certain defects in a female's fetus. Vitamin D is advised during winter months and also when sunlight is limited. People following a vegan diet may need vitamin B12 because it's only found in animal products. For those who want to boost their NAD levels, an NAD precursor such as NMN, NR or trigonelline could be taken. People who don't like the taste or smell of fish could also look at omega-3 supplements. So we kicked off with food at number one. The next one is that you might not realize you're actually taking too much. It's far easier to take too much of a supplement than it is to overdo it with just food. In the short term, this might lead to side effects such as nausea and diarrhea, but long-term overuse can have serious consequences. Many people take supplements for years without knowing whether they really do need to take them or how much is actually too much. Fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K are stored in the body rather than being excreted. But how much is too much? Too much vitamin D, for example, can lead to a buildup of calcium, which may damage your kidneys and your heart, as well as weakening all of your bones. High doses of vitamin A can cause liver damage, birth defects, and decreased bone density. Even water-soluble vitamins can cause problems, with long-term overuse of vitamin B6 being linked to some kind of nerve damage. Since most people don't regularly check their blood nutrient levels, they often don't realize something is wrong until the symptoms start to appear. But how can this overdosing actually happen? One of the most common causes is, let's say, double dosing. Let's say, for example, you take a vitamin D3 and K2 combined supplement, as I do. And let's say you also take a daily multivitamin and you get plenty of sunshine. Now, for most people who live in sunny regions, 10 to 30 minutes of midday sun exposed to the face, arms and hands a few times a week is usually enough to maintain healthy vitamin D levels. Now, I'm guessing most people will check the potency of their standalone vitamin D3 K2 supplement, and they may also glance at the multivitamin content for vitamin D also. But how many people would actually go the next step and add those three totals together? I've got to be careful with magnesium. I take a standalone magnesium supplement just before I go to bed, but I also take in the morning a vitamin D supplement that also has magnesium in it too. Some companies will, to make it look like you're getting a good deal, add a lot of cheaper compounds to their supplements. These all add up 
So it would be a good idea just once to check that you're not inadvertently overdosing or double dosing with a specific compound. And if you change your supplement supplier or you add something, then it's not difficult to check again. At number three, we've got a strange one considering what I'm doing here, and that is don't trust all social media advice. You've only got to spend a few minutes online and you'll probably see supplements promoted as immune boosting, natural or detoxifying. These words sound convincing, but they have no scientific definition. They are marketing terms. Food standard agencies around the world are always very clear and they usually state things such as supplements are not medicinal products and cannot exert pharmacological or metabolic action. Yet many online claims suggest otherwise. This kind of marketing, sometimes called health washing, gives the impression that supplements have the powers that they really do not. And remember that supplements are not subjected to the same testing and regulation as drugs. This means they can be poorly formulated, incorrectly dosed, mislabeled, lack protocols such as with food, on an empty stomach, first thing in the morning, etc. And in extreme, but certainly not unheard of cases, they do not contain the claimed ingredients, or if they do, they are sometimes underdosed. So if you are going to supplement, and there are numerous reasons to do so, seek out a reputable supplier, not some teenager, on TikTok. Point in case, we all know that NAD cannot be taken in supplement form because it's too large and unstable a molecule. But that doesn't stop numerous unscrupulous companies selling NAD supplements. It's anyone anyone's guess as to what is in there because it certainly isn't NAD as a compound. Look for companies that have a website that hasn't just been launched, an ideally a company that conducts third party testing and posts all of its results. Advertising standards authorities around the world all have numerous rules and regulations setting out how health claims should be made, including on social media. But this enforcement is very difficult indeed, especially with influencer marketing, where they can be here today and gone tomorrow. Now, I'm approached on a regular basis by companies who are more than often startups, and they're always trying to attach their products to my six year long longevity experiment. They think it's a quick way to build trust and credibility with their potential customers. One key indicator that they're just dipping in their toes is that they've only got between one and five products on their website with the explanation that they're focusing only on those supplements that have got provenance in longevity science. The real reason they just have limited funds to launch any more. Obviously, credible companies like Renew by Science and Pro Health Longevity were once startups, but they've proven over time to be made of the right stuff. Back to the companies that approach me on a regular basis. Very few of them then follow up years later after they've actually established themselves. This is because more often than not, they've actually gone out of business. Advertising standard authorities do have your interests at heart, but like all government or government funded entities, they move too slow to keep up with the way that marketing methods change. By the time they've seen, be made aware of and investigated a new spurious trend, then held numerous meetings, written a new law and passed it, the trend or technology has moved on. That's why it's important that we, as citizen scientists, keep up to date and don't get all of our information from just one source. At number four, you must always remember that the supplement industry is about sales before science. The global supplement market is worth over $100 billion. And like any major industry, the goal is growth and profit. This influences how products are developed, marketed and then sold. Again, reputable companies who've been in the business for decades have only lasted because as well as making a profit, they do sell quality products that help people with their health and well-being. Now, there are some that say if a supplement truly works, then it would be recommended by a doctor. As we know, doctors do recommend supplements, supplements like vitamin D and iron, to name just two. But the vast majority of doctors, having diagnosed an issue, will want to prescribe you with a drug. Drugs and repeat customers are how doctors and big pharma make their money. If you're diagnosed, for example, with high blood sugar, they will go straight to metformin. They won't recommend berberine as the first cheaper option. As I said, there are supplements like vitamin D and iron that are backed by science. But again, this all depends whether or not there is competition. If you cast your mind back or you've watched the channel because I did cover them, a number of retrospective studies came out 
after the pandemic saying those who had high levels of vitamin D had better health outcomes in that they didn't die than those who were insufficient in that particular compound. These were poo-pooed by some in the medical community because, in my humble opinion, there was a far more expensive drug that was available. And this was being paid for by governments who, as we know, overpay with taxpayers' money. Another issue is that many supplement companies advertise with claims that stretch far beyond what the research actually shows. At number five, we've got to remember that not all supplements are safe for everybody. Being available over the counter or from a website does not mean that supplement is 100% safe. Even products labelled as natural can interact with medicines or even cause severe harm. For example, St. John's wort, sometimes used for people with mood disorders, can have dangerous side effects if taken alongside some antidepressants, birth control pills and also blood pressure medications. Vitamin K can interfere with blood fitness like warfarin. And high dose iron can cause digestive problems and affect how some antibiotics are resorbed by the body. Also, very few supplements are tested for safety in pregnant ladies. Others, like high dose vitamin A, are known to be harmful in pregnancy as they can be passed through breast milk. If you're pregnant, breastfeeding, taking medication, or managing a health condition, it's recommended you speak to a healthcare professional before you start with any kind of new supplement. It's also good to remember that doctors receive very little training on health supplements, let alone how they can interact with other supplements or prescribe drugs. Most medical schools focus heavily on anatomy, physiology, pathology, pharmacology, and also evidence-based treatments, with nutrition itself only receiving a few hours of actual instruction. And within that already small nutrition component, dietary supplements is very rarely covered in any detail whatsoever. And as a result, many physicians graduate with little formal knowledge of vitamins, minerals, herbal products, or over-the-counter supplements that patients most commonly use. Instead, their understanding of these often come from personal study. And again, remember that this personal study is not mandatory. This gap means that patients frequently know more about specific supplements than their healthcare providers. And it highlights why many doctors feel unprepared or cautious when they're asked to give some guidance. Ultimately, while doctors are trained extensively in pharmaceuticals, the role of supplements in preventative health and longevity is an area where medical education has traditionally provided minimal preparation for the doctors. Supplements can support health, but only when there is a specific need. But they are not a cure all. It's always best to have a blood test first to ascertain what you're actually deficient in. Then try to address this deficiency through first diet and lifestyle. If this is not possible, then you can use a targeted approach to supplementation. Then give it a few months and get tested again to see if the supplements have had the desired effect. Now, I spoke earlier about choosing your supplement supplier very carefully indeed. If you're looking for a reputable supplier or you're thinking about changing your current supplier because they may be, for example, too expensive, check out Renew by Science and Pro Health Longevity. And if you do choose to buy from one of these companies, please feel free to use the code MYNMN at checkout to get between 10 and 15% off. And there are links in the description below to these companies' websites. I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Um, I'd be interested to see what supplement companies you actually trust. Let me know in the comments below who are your top two or three go-to supplement companies.